All right, guys. I'm gonna show you today how to uh, pull off the, the side body panels, side and the front, and remove the seat and remove the tank on the KLR 650. This is a 2015 model. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. The only thing you need for this is an eight millimeter socket, um, 10 millimeter socket, and a Phillips head. So to remove the, the side panels, we're going to use the 8 millimeter, and there's just this one here. out and because I have these bars on here I have to be very careful not to scratch it and then you do the same to the other side I'm actually not going to remove the other side but it's the exact same procedure and then for the seat it's going to be the 10 millimeter on both sides and I already have the other side done just to speed up the process and washer Once you've done that, the seat will lift up and pull back. That clip there goes in here. So that's the seat. For the tank, there's a few things you need to make sure you do. One is turn off the fuel, like that. And then we're gonna have to remove the fuel lines. This is the, the fuel line here that comes from the tank. So we need to remove this clip, pull it down, and then pull this off of the tank. So first thing we're gonna do is remove this clip. Basically, you just need to get it off of the, the piece of the tank where it connects. So you just need to bring it down to there, probably. And then just pull the line down. Probably going to have a little bit of a drip, but not much. Just leave that hose hanging there. Next you'll have, should be a vent line under here. And you should be able to see that vent line right there. See? So that one's pulled off. Next you're going to use your 10 millimeter. Undo these two bolts. 
and actually I'm going to just leave them in place almost out okay well, I'll do the front fairing or the front body panels sorry and that's going to be an eight millimeter for the front for this piece one here actually before I do those I'm gonna go ahead and do these two Phillips heads top with the washer Back to the eight millimeters. Eight millimeters. Oh, it's not gonna. It's not gonna like that. Okay, I switched to a, an adapter with a thinner extension and a smaller eight millimeter it's just a converter but that should allow me to get down to this eight millimeter here behind the uh, crash bars Sure, why it's so long, but huh. interesting. Went to the other side. crash bars allow you to get to these bolts this easily uh, the SW Motex which is what I have do so that's one good thing about them I'm going to get the longer extension for this.
to get these out around the bars. Pull it up. Pull it back and out this way. Spacer fell out when I did that. I'll have to figure out where that goes. Now the other side. Pull it out. There's the other spacer. All right, they're both out of the rubber grommets. There goes the other spacer. <laughs> Tilt it back. Okay, next, we've disconnected the fuel line, turned it off, removed the vacuum line, or drain line, breather line. Anyway, got that off. So the two 10 millimeters are the only thing holding the tank. That one's not loose enough. Gotta get the tank off. Pull this line off here. Just leave it hanging. Actually, I have to put it under that piece. For now. So then you lift the tank up here and just pull back towards you. Out. Like that. It's probably better to set it like that. So that's it. Body panels off. Tank off. Seat off. All right, so next, part of the reason I took all these off was to take a look at the, uh, the handlebars, all the cabling, and I have a set of brand new two inch rocks risers, anti-vibe, and I'm gonna take a look at possibly putting those on, depending how much room I have for these cables. These are the rock risers that I just got. Black anti vibe pivoting riser. I got them off of uh, a store on eBay. Uh, I'll link that store in the description. But uh, 7 8 inch or 1 and 1 8. So they've got a little insert here for 7 8, which I believe is what we have on the KLR factory. Uh, if you have a one and one eighth, you just remove that insert. But these are the anti vibe. You can see here there's a cushion, uh, a bit of a joint there that uh, cushions the, the vibrations out. If you see these and they're just solid metal here, you may still have a two inch riser, but it won't be an anti vibe. So the anti vibe takes away some of the vibration, and that's tightened by this bolt here that goes through the center. So yeah, um, that's the part number, 44-8450B Elite Anti-Vibration Riser Black. I assume the B is for black. They do make these in uh, like a brushed 
aluminum look and uh, I think there's one called natural but there's like a silver and natural which is a little bit more uh, darker more of that color probably um, but anyway everything on my bike is black so I decided to go ahead and go with the black all right so put these aside for a minute let's look at cabling so we've got our cables here throttle cables that do seem to pull and move a little when you turn all the way to the left so there's a little bit of flex here uh, and as you see these two that run down the side here that's them and they're not pulling here too badly they seem to be pretty loose there's nothing here that really holds them to anything um, so they should be able to move slightly the starter electrical is here it looks like it's got quite a bit of play to it so I don't think we'll have a problem there the brake brake line goes straight down the fork tube and there is a little bit of play there so that should be okay on this side the clutch the clutch goes around the front of the fork stem and comes down here so heard of situations where people had to move their clutch behind the fork stem um, and that may be something I have to think about we'll see see how it looks how this play right here looks once I get the bars in place um, this is the choke and the electrical choke here and right here we have to make sure this connection stays intact there is some play here you can see that so we want to make sure under turning we still have plenty of play in that choke line here it gets a little tight so you want to make sure you keep that that play there um, and we'll have to look at that once we get the the risers on get the handlebar back to the position we like because there's not a lot you can do for the choke possibly oh no that just keeps it straight that clip there we'll see okay so first we need to pull these out pull these caps off pull these bolts out and look at getting the, the risers on these caps are not in here real tight if I can get them with my little finger now could be easily lost looks like those are the same size so let me get a wrench for that Let's see if a six works yep number six these are not very tight either actually
There's some instructions. I think we need those. So what holds those in place? The little divot in the bottom. Okay. Nice. All right. So what we're going to do is essentially pull the bars up and put these two pieces in place where the bar is on these. So first, let's get this out of the way. I'm just going to kind of lay that there. You can see the little arrow pointing up. So I'm put that all the way in. Put that down. And I'm going to put these in. Maybe making the mistake with the bar in this position, but we'll see when I get this in here. So for now, I'm just going to hand tighten the top one first. I mean, just turn it with my fingers until it gets until it stops turning with my fingers like that. And then I'm going to tighten this one. Just a little bit more, not even until it stops, but just to get it in position there. All right, now I want to loosen this again. I want to make sure that this is all the way in. See how it moved just a little bit? So now that it's all the way in, and let's put it up to as far as I can put it up and still tighten it right there. Okay. So I believe that's the position I want it in. This one's tightened before this one. You can see the little gap there. That's typically the way you tighten these. That's the way I learned to tighten them. And you have just enough room to reach that one. And I'm tightening it down a little bit. So this is pretty much vertical, straight up. Now we can still rotate the bar once it's in there to get in position. First, let's see if we're going to be able to get the bar up in there. Oh yeah, no problem. Okay, so back to where we were. Part two. We're going to put this one in. These two bolts. And the original top piece. The arrow pointing up and rotate until we can get both of these in. Snug the top one down. First, almost tight. Okay, and then this one. Back it off. And now I'm going to push this in. Make sure it's there. It's all the way up against my Allen wrench, so I can still 
tighten it, but it's right there. That should put it even across from here to here because I've placed it against this Allen wrench. So if you look on both sides, it's against the Allen wrench. Now I'm gonna make sure this is tight. That's tighter than it was. And this one. Definitely want to check all these and make sure they're tight because you don't want your bar slipping. So that's that. Now we need just to bring the bar up into these positions. Make sure these are in their little divots and put the top pieces on. Here's the top pieces. So it's going to go like that. because I made sure when I took it out. Like that. So let's go ahead and just run it all the way down. I don't want to get them tight really. Uh, so what I'm going to do is kind of get it tight, make sure it form fits. That looks good actually, it meets up good. Let's run this one down. Okay. I'm actually going to kind of tighten them, and then I'm going to back them off. Just kind of wanted to make them have their shape. Make sure that the little... Uh, adapter piece fits the bar so now we can still move the bar but it's in place I'm dripping on dripping sweat on this thing huh? all right come on it's not that hot out here today Getting warmer though. So I'm gonna run this down. Feels pretty close. That side feels pretty close. Okay, and then I'm gonna back it off a little bit. So we can still move it. All right, so my concern are these cables, especially the, the choke cable. Um, so right now we're, we're almost full right. You can see my bars hitting the windshield up here. So I really would like it to be there because that keeps it from hitting. How are we on this choke cable? It's tight. It's tight. So that's a concern. Electrical. Electrical's fine. Choke cable's the only one on this side that's an issue at this point. Let's try full lock to the left. Let's check on this clutch cable. Clutch cable's getting tight. Yeah, you see how this clutch cable runs around the... That's actually around the switch. It's too tight there. So 
We need to run it under the switch. I mean the clutch cable. Did I say clutch cable or choke cable? Anyway, the clutch cable. It runs around this ignition switch and it needs to go under that. So I need to pull it down. So can I do that? Let me try to rotate it. There, now it's coming up off of it. So if I grab this and push it down like that, now it's under it. See what I just did? I just pulled the clutch cable down underneath the switch. Now when it goes over there, it's got plenty of room. Full lock, still hitting. Without hitting, right there. Centered. Bars are centered. So that's really where I want to put them for now. Until I actually get on the bike and, and see how it feels. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down because I know this is where I'm going to want them to stay. And I'm just loosen, loosely tightening the back ones. Going back to the front and put the regular tightness on them. pretty good. I don't want to strip them out. Okay. Now let's tighten these. cable is going under the switch it's at full lock it's not complete it's it's taut but it's not it's not causing a problem left side it loosens up over there so it's even looser so it's basically kind of riding on the uh, Well, you can see where it is down there. Um, the choke cable is the concern right now. So we can see the choke cable goes down and through that loop at the bottom. If I rotate this around, you can see something here pulled loose. And that was probably when I felt that resistance. It popped that restraint you loose and that's okay I'm tempted to just take that off but it's hanging pretty good I'm just gonna leave it like that um, the choke cable comes down here and it's tight I'm wondering if it needs to be under these underneath this clip full lock not a problem and it's it's tight but it's it's not destroying anything still got a little bit of play here I think it's gonna be fine actually if there's a way to bend this backwards oh yeah that's on a nut See what this is. Is that a ten or an eight? Ten. It's a ten. All right. So 
let's watch this choke cable, see if it gets a little looser. And I'll loosen that. Oh, look at there. That's better. I don't think that's going to cause a problem with the tank. But I'm at full lock to the right right now. And you can see this has plenty of room. Once I move this back just a little bit, big difference. Hope I didn't strip that. No, that's still good. All right. So, everything's good on this side. Let's check the other side again. Throttle when I go to the right is tight right here. This one is my concern right now. When I go full lock to the left, you see it full? That's full lock. It's pulling down. It's tight. Does it still work? Yeah. But it's tight. If anything had to be lengthened, it would be this one. Um, so what can we do? What can we do? So let's try. Let's see if let's see how possible it is to pull that throttle cable out of that hook. that and then let's just tighten it back because I have an idea it's got more play see is it too loose here eh, questionable what if I just zip tied it right there with a loop so it could still sit here and move through that loop but not fall off somewhere don't want it to be flopping out in the wind but don't want it to fall down get around that or whatever so let's try that so I'm going to zip tie it to around this hook, but so it doesn't come off this end over here, I'm going to go around this electrical line also, like this, and then I'm going to go around that throttle cable that's, that's getting, that was getting pinched. And I'm only going to tighten it enough to keep it from going off somewhere. So full lock, it's loose, it can do what it wants. Pulling a little bit when I go back to full lock, but if you, as you see, it's plenty of play here. Plenty of play. It's not pulling on this part again, like it was. Back to the right, full lock, it gets loose, but it can't go any further than there. I like that. I don't like to leave these really sharp. If I don't, if I can help it. Okay. Looks good. Full lock. Mirrors don't hit. centered everything's tight now we just got to put everything back together we got the risers on bars tight in place centered looks good we'll adjust it later if we need to if I need to roll it back some 
but for now uh, it's it's in place so I'm gonna pop these little caps back in the good thing about rotating the bar and I don't have to mess with this anymore so I'm just gonna loosen this and this and I'll be able to rotate the bar or maybe just loosen that a little bit and then I'll be able to rotate the bar forward or backward to where I want it but the risers are in place I will say one thing uh, I did watch one video that uh, said that they could feel a little flex because of this this bolt here and the anti-vibe material um, it's not a, it's not one solid piece the way the standard two inch risers are the cheaper ones um, there is that room in there for that bolt and you know the rubber which vi keeps the vibration down the washers so they said they could actually feel when they press down on the bars a slight bit of flex that may or may not be something that I can't stand so I'll have to wait and see how I feel about that all right next I'm gonna put the gas tank back on gas tank these two recessed places here go into the little nubs that are on the bike right there so I'm gonna set this down we know that these bolts have to go all the way up here so we know it's not in the right spot right now it's hard to do with this jack in the way uh, yeah we can see the nub right there and the tanks back here so you also look here I'm grabbing the choke cable I don't know if you can see that so I'm gonna push the choke cable back up behind it in position I just need to slide it forward all right guys did you have this much trouble <laughs> Tank's not even half full, so well, maybe half full. All right, there's the nub, there's the opening. Are these cables getting in the way. Oh, I just felt it go down. All right, lined up, lined up. It's on there. Let's check the cables. Specifically the choke. Choke is good. Choke's good.
Throttle's good. Throttle's good. You can still see the zip top right here. It's actually hanging out a little bit. That's this. Don't pay no attention to that sound. All right. A little squeaky there, but that's all right. Okay, I do want to say one thing. So this is, I don't know which part number is actually from the factory, but if you can see here, there's this number, 1RAV2SEK, and then there's this number here. Um, so I'm not sure which one's the factory and which one's the, uh, the site that I bought it from, but I actually bought it from Off-Road Idaho. Uh, that's the eBay seller, Off-Road Idaho. And uh, they are a top rated seller, um, very high percentage of, of good reviews. And uh, I felt pretty pretty strong about buying it from them with, with no problem. Uh, I try to avoid eBay sometimes just because I'm not so sure if everything's authentic, but this appears to be authentic and Off-Road Idaho appears to be a good seller. Seems they seem to have a lot of products and I believe they have a website also. So they were the cheapest on eBay at the time, cheapest anywhere at the time. Um, so prices vary, you know, but these were about 139 uh, for these risers, anti-vibe, two inch. All right, so let's get back to putting everything back together. has to go back up through this hole. Now, for these two lines down here, oh great, there's a dump of gas all over myself. Get that nice and clean. Old bike's dirty right now, so as you can see, <laughs> uh, I saved the wash for after this. All right, so this line here needs to go back on first. Back here. If I can get a hold of it. Come on. Let's see if I can get it on without actually taking the clamp off. <clears throat> All right, it's on there now. And now this one. Main fuel line. That's on there too. Fuel's back on. Alright, 
tank is back together. All right, we're back. So when I had this out earlier, I had it upside down when I was holding it up here, but it's like this and this side and this side fit in these little notches here. And then this piece goes up like this. And And that's what you screw that into there and there. Although that doesn't look like it has a thread on it. Let's hit the threads on this piece. Oh, it is. Okay. That makes more sense now. Alright, so let's put this piece back. I still don't understand why these are so long, but it's in there. Now the question, where did this little spacer go? I believe it's up here where this screw goes in. At least I'm going to hope that it is because that's where I'm putting it. And if I'm wrong, I've just invented a new spot for it. All right, other side. Notice that. So that grommet got pushed through. All right, 
I guess. It's going to take a little work here. This is going to be about as bad as changing a tire, changing an inner tube. Maybe not. Maybe not. Whew. Yay. All right. Well, let's try this again. Now it's in. That's good. These are still lined up. A little chair here. All right, now we're done on this side. <laughs> All right, so the long boat goes in front. These two go on the sides. Pretty sure these are the... <laughs> nope. Well... Looks plenty long there, so let's call it there. Yeah, it looks like the longer one would go here. Hopefully, I did it that way on the other side. If not, I will. Does it work? And the longest one is going to go up in the front. Get my chair again. You guys probably can't see that, but it goes up there. And it's a long one. Why is 
not so long. All right, front panels are on, tanks back on, hooked up, seat. If you're wondering why this is disconnected, I got an AGM battery in there. Just put it in, so just calling that out so you'll know. Nobody's gonna be like, hey, you, you left that off. There we go. Two inch risers. Just gotta try it out. Alright guys, back on the bike on the KLR. And I'm trying out these uh rock risers um, so the first thing I want to say is there is a tiny bit of flex if you can see me moving the handlebars right now it's hard to move them but there is a little bit of flex there and that's in your anti-vibration piece um, I don't think it's gonna be a problem though I don't think that's gonna bother me at all Vibration in my handlebars, um, even with the 
grip puppies, I still notice a difference. So these two inch rocks risers with the anti vibe built in, they do make a difference. Um, and the position actually feels great. Um, I thought I was gonna, I was worried about it feeling too high, like I was, you know, riding with ape hangers or something like that, but. It's, it's really perfect. Uh, my arms are still not straight out. Um, they're down at a slight angle. But uh, it feels really good. And whereas before I had to really hunch over to, to ride standing up, that's not the case anymore. Um, when I stand up, I can lean forward, put my knees up on the tank, and still reach the bars pretty uh, almost straight not quite I'm still hunched over a little bit but but it feels so much more comfortable so if you're over six feet tall um, this is definitely something you're gonna want to do now whether you go with the straight two inch or the um, anti vibe they're a little more money um, you, may, you may spend 30 or 40 more to get the ones with the anti-vod. If you don't care about that, then it's not a big deal. Um, but I kind of like it. And, you know, I think I can always even tighten them a little more if I want to. But when I'm riding, I don't notice the flex. If I was striving to do some really hard braking, uh, you know, really just power down on the front end, might notice a little flex but it feels really good and so so I'm happy um, yeah so that's thumbs up that's a thumbs up for the uh, two inch rocks risers handlebar risers with the anti-vibration on the KLR 650 Um, so what's next? What is next? Next is going to be probably the JNS lowering pegs for the foot pegs uh, because I'm, I'm definitely happier with my riding position. But still being, you know, over six feet, when I stand up on these pegs, I still feel like I'm standing on top of the bike instead of standing with the bike. And I know that I should be more with the bike, um, a little lower. And even though it's only maybe a couple inches uh, difference, I think it would help me. So... Yeah, I think that's going to be next. JNS uh, foot peg lowering pegs, lowering brackets. But um, these rock risers are are awesome. Yeah, I was just worried when I was in a seated position that I would feel like my arms were up in the air, like way up. But I don't. I'm still, I'm still. Uh, I mean, I probably could even put three inches on there and still, still not been level. But these feel good, so I'm happy. So I hope you guys are having a good weekend. Um, trying to relax a little bit here. To get those, uh, wanted to get those risers put on, get that tested, and go out for a little ride.
vibration. I feel so much more vibration in my feet than I do in my, my handlebars right now. It's pretty amazing. Good one.